Good evening, Fernwood. It is your comforting cohort, Neil, here, and it's time for us to get cozy with another episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Today we are watching episode 172 from November 30th, 1976. Let us recap. Yesterday, Mary sat in stunned silence as she tried to get across to Jody and Loretta that Charlie was in jail for animal cruelty. We cut over to the jail where... Charlie and Dr. Fracas pace in their cell. Dr. Fracas confirms that he is a veterinarian and Charlie goes through a range of emotions as he figures out exactly what was going on and exactly from whom the testicle he was going to have transplanted was going to come from. If you weren't watching, then that would have been Hamlet the Great Dane. And at this understanding, Charlie is completely disgusted. Tom comes home from work to an empty house with his new tennis racket as he gets a visit from Merle Jeters who wants to encourage him to talk to the other junior Chamber of Commerce members to get them on board with Merle Jeter for mayor. Mary shows up with the news that Charlie is in jail and when Merle apologizes for everything that he's done, Mary takes him at his word. Then back next door at the Haggers, Loretta hurriedly answers the door to find Merle coming to comfort her despite everything that she does to make him go away. Luckily, Jody is there with a cup of tea. Loretta introduces the two men and a call is received from Charlie in jail where Charlie has made a big decision and that he is not ever coming back home. That is all of the recapping for yesterday's episode, everyone. It was big emotions for me. Let's find out what emotions are here in this episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Mary Hartman! Uh, listen, there's a... Uh, Garth, honey, uh, listen, I gotta run. I'm gonna be late for work. Uh, I've got to go to work, too. And you wouldn't want me going to work in a shirt with a button missing, now would you, kid? Oh, honey, that's okay. You've got six clean shirts in your drawer. Uh, of course I do. That's the way I like things done around here. Well, then, w w wear one of those. Well, what should I do with this? What do you suggest? Put it back in the drawer with a button missing? It's a shirt drawer, Patty, not the Goodwill. Garth, I promise you I will sew on the button the very first minute I get home from work. Uh, sweetheart, that's not a very orderly way to take care of my shirts or my shirt drawer, is it? Garth, honey, I really don't want to be late for work. I don't think people should ever be late for anything, kiddo. But you've got to order your life. And I don't think you can take on more than you can handle. Well, I know that, but I don't think It's that... pretty clear that you are trying to do too much. No. Well, it's clear to I... me. You can't take care of your job down there and take care of my shirts. Garth, I will sew on the button when I get home. Now, Pat, what I think we have here is a little problem, don't we? As usual, you have the problem, and I have the solution. You're going to have to quit your job. Oh, no, I can't do that. The hospital needs me, and you know how much I love my work. More than you love uh, taking care of my house properly and efficiently? It's not a question of, of, of uh, either... Uh, Pat, Pat. That's precisely the question, and I've already answered it. So we don't have to talk about it anymore. I think the hospital can get used to not having you around. No. Listen, our son is coming home next week, and you were going to have to quit your job anyway. I don't want him ar alone around here having to fend for himself. This place could use just a little bit more attention and a little bit more order, like getting my sh shirts done on time. Speaking of time, I've got an important meeting at 9.30, and I would appreciate it if you would get a button on this shirt right away, okay? Chop, chop. Come on, Gato, time's a waste of Will you at least let me call in and let the head nurse know that I'm going to be late? Oh, I guess we have another failure in communication. You're not going to be late. You're going to be unemployed, Pat. El Quito. Capiche? Oh, Garth. Now, it's a little button, Patty, just a little teeny one. I know you can handle it, okay? Uh, 
Oh, who the hell is that? Hi! Hi. Come on in. Guess what? I have a letter for you. Isn't that nice? Now, it's not that I wrote it. It's just that it was delivered to our house by mistake, by the mailman who is frequently mistaken. He's a hippie. It's a very fine post office. They don't discriminate in their hiring. Oh, it's from our son. He's coming home next week. Isn't that sweet? He's coming home and he wrote besides? Well, he's probably letting me know when he's getting in. I think that is so thoughtful. What a nice boy he must be. I mean, that is just so considerate and mature. You know, I, I believe that it is very important that children be thoughtful. Heather is a very thoughtful child. Just not to me. What's the matter? Is that bad news? Oh, no. Oh, good. Because personally, I hate to get bad news in a letter, especially if it's in the morning. I find that it's so much harder to cope in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes. So, like, if I'm going to get bad news in a letter, I would much rather that the mailman be late, which he usually is because he's a hippie. Did I mention that? Uh-huh. I wonder why they don't deliver the mail at night. I think it would make everybody a lot happier. Good morning, Mary. Well, uh, good morning to you, Garth. How are you? Fine. You're wearing another shirt. Of course I'm wearing a shirt. You didn't expect me to go to the office without a shirt. A topless public relations man, Patty? I think that's still a few years in the future. Oh. Morning, sweet. Well, you two are just so lovey-dovey. I mean, that's really nice. I mean, really very nice. It's a sign of love. Sure is. Mm -hmm. Of course, not being lovey-dovey doesn't mean that there's love, especially if you're married to Tom. Tom's a great guy, all right. I've really gotten to like him, you know, Mary? Yeah, me too. It's really nice when you can like your neighbors, you know? Amen, Mary. Speaking of which, did Pat mention she quit her job at the hospital? No. You quit your job at the hospital? As a nurse? That's right. So what, are you just going to wear the outfit around the house? Well, it's paid for, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> but Pat, I thought you loved that job. Well, she did. But she quit for me. Oh, you mean you need home care? You're homesick? No. No, Mary, uh, Pat decided to devote herself full-time to being a good little wifey and a mom. Isn't that right, sweetheart? Did you tell her to quit? We discussed it. You mean you told her to quit a job that she loved and she did it? Well, you tell her, honey. That's right, Mary. I thought I would quit my job. Isn't she a good girl? Aren't you, Pat? I said, aren't you a good girl, Pat? I'm a good girl. Well, I have got to go catch a pig. What? Catch a pig. You have to catch a pig if you're going to bring home the bacon. <laughs> oh. Oh, bring home the bacon. Oh, money? Bring home the bacon? What, is that a joke? Yep. Right. Okay, I uh, hope to see you real soon, Mary. Yeah, real soon. Bye-bye, Plunkin. My stuff ready for the office and the world. <sighs> Ciao. You know, he really should work a little on his humor. Yeah. Charlie? Hi, the book. Hi, Tom. Hi. Any, uh, any word from Charlie? Yeah, he called on the phone last night. Yeah, and? And what, what, is he still in jail? When's he coming home? Huh? You're not going to believe this, Tom, because it's just, it's just the most unbelievable thing I've, I've ever been asked to believe in my life, and I just, I can't believe it. It's just... What? He's, 
said he's not coming home. What? He's not? What? Are you kidding? Why not? Oh, Charlie's got it figured out that, you know, in his mind and everything, that it just isn't fair to ask a new bile wife, you know, like I am, to be married to a husband who really don't have the capabilities of being a husband, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But, but Loretta, Charlie's condition is not permanent. I mean, it's just a psychological block. Isn't, isn't that what Dr. Furman said? That's exactly what Dr. Well, Furman said, and I know that, and I believe it, and you believe it, but Charlie doesn't believe it. You know, he just doesn't understand that psychological stuff. He just doesn't believe it. Yeah. And he just, all he knows is, is that when he woke up in the hospital and he looked down and he see what the gun shooting shot off, you know, he just got it right smack dab in his head that he yeah. just couldn't be an honest to Pete husband without it. Boy, you know what? He kept telling me that. And I, man, you know, some, I wish I could knock some sense into that man's head. I mean, I really do. I tried to knock and womp them traumas out of his head, Tom, but I'll tell you, it's like trying to womp an egg right back snap dab into that chicken. You can't do it. He's you know what? You just cannot do it. Now he's just got it firm in his mind that, you know, he can't give me womanly desires and everything, and he said there's, he just can't get out of the mess, and he just, he's not coming home. Oh. And the worst thing is, he said, I, I did it. I drove him to it. Because a man's got his pride, you know that, Tom. And, I mean, I was ranting and raving around this house about, you know, not having my womanly wants satisfied. I went singing, moaning in the night in front of everybody right for him, you know, and the thing. And then I just, I just stomped on his pride and I drove him away. But I don't buy that. And I don't buy that Charlie's not coming home. I really appreciate that, Tom. I mean, it's real kindly and Christian of you and everything. And I... I appreciate it because right now you know, I kind of need a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm alone, well, so. I know, I know. No, no, no. Look, you, me and Mary, now you know we're always going to stand by you. You know that. I know it. Mm -hmm. And I, I get a lot of comfort from that, and yeah, I appreciate yeah, it. I yeah. really do. Now look, Loretta, Charlie is coming back. Now we're, we're I don't, we're gonna, we're gonna see to that. Now, I don't know when or how, but he's coming back. Now, meanwhile, I just want you to know that you can count on us, okay? Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, I've always kind of felt like he was my big brother or something, you know. I mean, every girl likes to have a big brother, and I just, I want you to know that I really could use that right now, and I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, your big brother, you know what he's got to do? He's got to get himself to work. But in the meanwhile, I want to give you some straight talk, Loretta. Sure. What? Well, you know, you are a mighty attractive woman. That's oh, true. I didn't even know you ever looked and thought about or noticed yeah, any well, of this well, Sure, I, I do. Sure, I do. And, and you know, you're gonna have a lot of guys flocking around now that Charlie's temporarily gone. And oh well, listen, no, honey, you no, gotta watch out for yourself. No, there's no concern for that, Tom, because I, you know, my fierce fidelities for Charlie. I, I know even that. Look. I know that. But all I'm doing is I want to. I'm, I'm asking to see that you don't get yourself into any trouble, which you are doing, whether you know it or not. I'm not getting myself in any trouble. Well, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Now, look, here's what I mean. Now, now just, now look. Look at you. Now, look right. at you. No, you're running around half naked. I mean, practically a Playboy picture that would drive Jimmy Carter right up the wall. Now, just now, when I rang the bell and you answered the door dressed like that or undressed like that, I mean, Loretta, now think for a minute. What if it had been somebody else, huh? I mean, what? Wait a minute. Hold the phone here a second. Are you telling me that dressed like this, I was, I could have like stirred up a man's emotions like uncontrollable or something. Exactly oh, what I mean. Now that's Are true. No, I'm serious, Loretta. No, I'm serious. No, well, look, look, look. I look, guess look. it could happen, huh? It could happen. So look, have you got a bathrobe or something? Hey, I got your breakfast all cooked. Hi, hi, Tom. What? What's the matter, Tom? Oh, good gosh, in Brazil, huh? And Jody is a good friend of ours. He just came over here a few minutes ago. Tom, he is loyal and fierce friend of Charlie's. Now, he would never in a million years think of taking carnal advantage of me when Charlie's gone. Now, that's it. That's unpainted truth, so you just get that look right off your face and get them adulterous thoughts out of your mind. Coffee. Chang Ping. 
Look, I came over here because I was afraid that that you and Tom were were mad at me for not for not giving you the baby. Look, I don't even want to give it to Christine anymore, but I'm under contract. Mad? Who's mad? I mean, Kathy, how could I be mad at the one person I've shared everything in my life with? I mean, how could I? I mean, all you've actually done is just give up your baby to someone you don't even like. Look, I'm just doing what, what I felt that I had to do, or did, until I found out that I had to be awake through it all. Maybe a little coffee will pick you up. How about a Coke? You want a Coke? You want a Diet Pepsi? What, no yes? What? No, I can't have any stimulants. Christine wants a completely natural childbirth. A natural childbirth? At home? Now that's a wonderful idea. At home? No, she's at least going to let me go to the hospital. But, but I have an idea to get out of the whole thing. Oh, no, Kathy. No, I mean from the whole natural childbirth thing. You see, to get into the program, you need a husband coach. And he has to go to breathing school with you. You know, somebody to teach you when to breathe and when to push. But, Mary, there is no he. You mean Brian won't do it? That's not the kind of breeding Brian was bred for. What about Christine? Dressed up. No, she just wants to learn enough to fake it. Let me think a minute. Okay, just let me think a minute here. Ah! No. No. Well... Okay, I've got it. What? I'll be the father. Husband coach. All right. I'll be the husband coach. I knew you were going to say something like that. But there's one problem. A doctor? Don't worry, Kathy. I will use every mental health contact that I have. After all, home birth is a mentally healthy procedure, even if it does mess up the home. Kind of. Mary, the problem is that you're not a husband. No, but Kathy, I am your sister, so I'll be your husband. Now, I can't marry you because of Tom, but I'll be a father. I will be a female father. It's like a mother. I'll be a mother coach. That's a person, okay? I'll be a person coach. It's supposed to be a man. No, 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 no. That's usually not supposed to be. I mean, you've heard of that phrase, midwives and wet nurses, right? Now listen to that carefully. Midwives, wet nurses. Now, have you ever heard the expression, uh, uh, mid-husbands, wet doctors? Have you ever heard that? Well, that's what I mean. Kathy, I have a very good sense of father in me. Being a father is definitely a job that mothers know best. up, you know, some household bills. <laughs> Would you like a cup of coffee? All right. Sure, that'd be nice. This is my first day as a full-time housewife, and I have just been wandering around with nothing to do. So I just thought I'd come over for a visit. Instant. I beg your pardon? Would instant coffee be all right? Fine. So you take care of the bills. Now, that is one thing that Garth won't trust me to do, and actually, I wouldn't mind having the responsibility. Would you rather have regular... Regular? Coffee. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't go to the bother. Instant is just fine. I don't have any. Well, then let's just 
Sit and visit. You mean without coffee? Could I ask you another question? Now, if you're very happy, why do you always seem to look the way you do? Are you really interested, Mary? Not if you don't want to tell me, no. Not if, not if it's personal. I mean, because I, I have a tremendous belief in uh, respecting a person's uh, privacy. So certainly don't tell me if you don't want to. Tell me, Ben. I've got a terrible problem, Mary. Really? Oh, Pat, we have so much in common because I have a terrible problem, too. Oh, good, then we both do. What? You first. Our son. What do you mean, the one who was writing the letters this morning? Well, no, I thought that was from little Garth when I, when I saw the, the school stationery, but the letter mm -hmm. was from the colonel. The colonel? Hmm. Is that like the principal? Oh, yes. Well, what did he write about? It? The reason little Garth is not happy at military school, the reason he wants to come home. Pat, does he have a problem? I don't know how to tell you this. Try. Diuresis. Oh my God. What is that, a rash? Bedwetting. Bedwetting? And the colonel knows about this? Everybody knows about this at the academy. Children can be so cruel. You know, Pat, a lot of little boy children have this problem, and they do grow out of it. Now, how old is the little colonel? I mean, uh, uh, the little Garth. Fourteen. Well, some children grew out of it. If Garth ever finds out about this, he'll be furious. Why, because it's a sissy thing? Mm. Oh, big Garth shouldn't be angry about this. I don't think that little Garth wets his bed on purpose. I mean, Pat, who? would want to sleep in a wet bed. I just hope little Garth can come home and that his father never, ever finds out why he wanted to leave military school. Yeah, well, uh, don't worry about me because uh, I won't leak a word to anyone. <laughs> Well, we're finding some things out. And it starts with the development of the gimbal home, which is uglier and uglier. Garth is incredibly controlling of Pat and asks her to leave her job. over a button. I don't know where this is going, but I'm very uncomfortable to be here. And we have Mary come over, who is the witness, right? The neighbor who's starting to pick up on things. And I'll point this out just because I don't want to forget it, but Mary seems at the moment to be ambivalent to Tom. 
and it's something that she hasn't been verbalizing. I think it may be the root of why she seemed depressed over the last couple of episodes to me. And she's not saying something that I think is there. The depression or the ambivalence, whatever she's feeling is being it's being left unverbalized and well there's going to be a point at which it becomes verbalized but this is me trying to figure out what it is but Garth is just awful to Patty and then we get this letter and she hides it from Garth and we'll find out what it is in the last scene today luckily I was glad that it wasn't something that was drawn out you know for weeks you know simple letter but I feel like Garth has been incredibly cruel to Patty. I think cruel is a light word. The control, you know, at this point we're not seeing physical harm, so it's not physical abuse, but it's certainly abuse. And that's not what she talks about Patty when uh, when she has the opportunity, but it's really worrying and I don't know where this is going to go and if it were in real life I hope that someone would step in but at this point Mary is just putting the clues together she has just figured out what Garth said and of course Patty covers it up and then we get Tom checking in on Loretta to see how she's doing and catch up on Charlie not coming home and for a second, I thought there was going to be some weird tension between Tom and Loretta. And there's weird tension, but just not the tension I was expecting. Uh, because, you know, Loretta is dressed in a very revealing outfit. I am an advocate for women being able to dress the way that makes them feel powerful and good and happy. On the other hand, you know, I definitely also did spy some underwear. Um... So that's a question. You know, I don't know. People should be running around in their underwear. You tell me. But uh, Tom and Loretta are talking about Charlie and his sensibility. And then the conversation shifts over to Loretta and how men will be going after her. And generally speaking, you know, in schools, for instance, the... Uh, the thought of sending a girl home because she's dressed too provocatively for the men to keep their uh, minds less distracted or whatever. I stand by the women in this case, the girls in this case, to be able to wear, you know, within reason, <laughs> you know, we don't need to be showing, uh, like, genitalia, for instance, but anyway. Um, I'm going to cut back a little bit, sorry, to Charlie. There's a thought that I had, uh, then we'll get back to where we were with Tom, but there was a thought that I had with Charlie, which was that he is so focused on penile, v vaginal sex that, you know, I feel like there's more to keeping pleasure in your marriage than specific one specific sex act. You know, a variety of sex acts that involve, you know, erect penises, but there are things that they could be doing together to, in to increase each other's pleasure. And I'm not going to talk about that because, you know, do your own homework. But then the conversation really does go towards Loretta and how provocatively she dresses. And, you know, I certainly noticed it when she, when she <laughs> ran to the door, uh, you know, because my eyes are going to see things, but... You know, she has the right to dress how she wants. It is important to know who she's around, but mainly I feel like this is Tom figuring out that Jody is a young man in the house that he didn't know about, and just like Mary, he sees trouble. Tom sees trouble. We get a brief scene with Kathy and Mary where Kathy has made clear that she doesn't even want to give the baby to Christine other than the contract, which is new because it seemed like last week she was very happy for the baby to go to them. Now I'm remembering specifically why it's new. 
Kathy doesn't like the agreement that she has to go through childbirth with no anesthesia. And, hey, you're going to go through the pain. <laughs> I, maybe you should get the choice. But in this case, Mary agrees to be a natural childbirth coach. I think that's what it is. I don't know if this would have been Lamaze. I don't really know the difference between natural childbirth and Lamaze because I've never gone to either kind of class. But in any case, Mary is going to stand with Kathy in the process of giving birth to this child. And I like that. I appreciate that as a sister, Mary feels like she can stand with her sister. A little bit silly to think that it has to be a man who is doing this coaching job because you're a coach. And anyone, I think, any mature human being can handle the job of helping someone. A penis doesn't necessarily mean you're a better coach. So put down the protest, Kathy. Mary can do the job. Other than, you know, whatever, whatever weird mental things are going on with Mary. But everyone's got weird mental things. So, you know, you just got to manage it. But, hey, that is Kathy and Mary. And then we get back to Mary with Patty. And Patty comes in and awkward Mary spraying the kitchen with Pam. <laughs> like she's supposed to smell like she's been cooking something. But then Pat shows up and they have an awkward bit about coffee and, you know, there's lots of awkward bits. And then we cut to the table and Pat explains the letter and that little Garth has been wetting the bed and that's why he's coming home unhappy. And how that will be a conflict in the home with adult Garth. I don't know if Mary will hold on to the secret, but that's there's the implication that she may or she, she may not as the circle wipe comes. But I also feel like Mary is sensing some of the abuse that Patty has been through. She's verbally noted that Garth asked Pat to quit her job and she's definitely feeling something but the gimbals are hiding. The gimbals are obscuring it, they're covering it up. And TV characters don't always pick up on those things that we all see. So, yeah, there's many things to talk about here. I think maybe we should start doing that. Thank you so much everyone for doing what you do, for coming back in time, for watching the show with me, for rocking the comments. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.